everybody, welcome back to Video Mesoteric and continuing series, Model Museum, where I review every single Model 1, Model 2, and Model 3 arcade game in a retrospective fashion. That's not a racing game, because I did that retrospective last year. And today we have Rail Chase 2, which is basically Gunblade New York, except if it was cheery and took place on a rail track. I absolutely love this game, and it's another game begging for a modern remake in virtual reality. Before we get too far involved though, do me a huge favor, go down below, hit like and subscribe, and ring that notification bell, definitely helps us out. And if you feel so inclined and want to support the channel, we got a Patreon link down below as well. But if you've never seen a cabinet for Rail Chase, it was a gigantic pneumatic cabinet that had a full rail car that you could basically sit in. It was absolutely spectacular, and I have not seen a cabinet for this game probably in two decades. The last time I saw it was like 2004 or 2005 in Aspen, Colorado at a resort when I was there for X Games. So if you do know where there's a cabinet for this, leave me a comment down below. Even if it's been 10 to 15 years, I really would be curious. But right off the top, it's another Sega light gun game, but it does use the XY coordinate setup versus being a traditional light gun. But this game is just an absolute ride, pun very much intended. It is from start to finish action packed, constantly moving, constantly throwing you in different directions. And this rail car is pure magic because it never once crashes the entire game. And my favorite part about this game is just how replayable it really is. There are so many different branching paths and ways you can go by shooting different rail connectors which you will see shortly. But all of these explosive barrels, all of the enemies coming at you, it is just pure action. It is chaos on screen. You'll see here that I'm going to shoot that switch and I'm going to go to the left. Depending on which direction you head in the game, you're going to have a completely different experience. It's going to be easier, harder, and you're going to be in completely different levels. But you'll see here as we move on with the game, this would be perfect in virtual reality. It kind of reminds me of Until Dawn Rush of Blood, except way earlier, way cheerier. But it still has that same on rails, on a roller coaster vibe going on. And all of these boulders to shoot, all of these different twists and turns just really make this a super unique game. Of course, because it is a two-player game, it gets even better with friends. You can load this up, do a two-player experience at game night, and have an absolute blast. It's the easiest game to pick up and play. All you do is aim and shoot, but it is so much fun when you're playing it. I just love it. And unfortunately, there was supposed to be a sequel to this game, Real Chase 3. It is teased in the credits of this, and we never got it. So just like LA Machine Guns and Gunblade New York, Real Chase 2 was supposed to have a third game in the series. But you'll see here, some levels only have one exit out, and as we move across this bridge here, this magical rail cart's gonna perfectly bounce off these statues' hands, and it's going to launch into this hole where there's also a track. Not sure why they built it there. Doesn't make any sense, but it's an arcade game and it doesn't need to make sense. Yet if we go back and as opposed to turning left, we actually go straight, you're going to see a completely different area of the game. And these are not small branching paths. These are entire different levels or entire different areas of the same level. Because you'll see here now those two statues that we just bounced across were going underneath a waterfall and into a tunnel. And this is why I love Rail Chase so much. There's so much replayability, there's so many hidden paths, there's so many different ways you can get through the game, and depending on which way you go, it will be easier or harder. And I do love these interior sections as well. The game will slow down and give you more of a shooting gallery vibe, a la Virtual Cop or The House of the Dead, but when you just feel like you've done enough of that with a boss encounter, it's going to throw you back outside, you're going to be jumping, looping around, and doing all other manner of crazy impossible things in this rail cart. And I do love this boss here as well, with all of his enemies throwing dynamites on these rail cars. Everything looks, sounds, and plays incredible in this game. And I do really like the graphical vibe as well. This is basically like playing an Indiana Jones video game that has nothing to do with the license. And it was probably better than most Indiana Jones games ever made that weren't the LucasArts adventure games. But you'll see here we defeat the boss. We just get to keep moving on. It gives you like a 10 second pause just to take a breather. But otherwise, it's going to throw you right back into the action. It's going to be intense and fun. And it's going to give you those branching paths. Again, we can either go straight or we can go right. Depending on what mood we're in, what level we want to see, we get to make that choice. And I love it. This game also has a really fun, upbeat, colorful soundtrack. Kind of feels a little bit like Magical Truck Adventure on Model 3, which feels like this game as well. So go ahead and list for like 45 seconds or so. I'll come back and tell you more about the history and why I love the game. But enjoy!
It's just a great bright cheery soundtrack and a bright cheery game in which you happen to mow down like 400 people in your fight against a giant train. Now why are you doing that? We have absolutely no idea. Real Chase 2 basically has no story whatsoever just like the original game. You will see I take a death here. When you get further into the game it does become more difficult and it's not that you're just shooting enemies. You also have a lot of obstacles that you need to knock around to make sure they're not in your way. All these barrels here if you don't shoot them out of your way they are going to cause damage but it does work and if you're playing this as a two player game screen space management becomes easier because one person can take the left side of the screen and one person can take the right side of the screen. But again, I just love how magic this rail car truly is. It bounces and jumps off all of these rocks, does an entire barrel roll a la Star Fox, and lands right here on these rocks, never once plummeting to your death into the ravine below. It is absolutely ridiculous, but it 100% fits the game so perfectly well. Now the only thing about Rail Chase 2 is this, it emulates perfectly but you do lose a little something by not having the giant cabinet in front of you. It's not losing enough that the game isn't fun, but it was a completely different experience to sit in the cabinet and play this game. So again if you ever see a cabinet, throw some quarters in, you're 100% going to have an absolute blast when you play it having that extra cabinet experience. And that's the great thing about emulation. It does allow us to play games that are almost impossible to find in arcades now. The downside of that is there's nothing that can emulate the real car that you actually sat in. But that's what happens with preservation. You get a lot of things, but some things are just going to be lost in translation. But I do, again, just love this game, and I love that it also seems to have informed Magical Truck Adventure, a video I'll either show you shortly or you've already seen, because it does seem like somebody at Sega really loved rail cars. You have Rail Chase, Rail Chase 2, and Magical Truck Adventure all taking place on tracks, which is really funny because the genre of the light gun game is actually an on-rail shooter, and honestly, maybe Sega was just playing around with that, but I'm always just going to call them light gun games. I always get a comment saying they're on-rail shooters, that's fine, you can think that, I just don't love saying it. But honestly, again, as we just loop around here with all these different obstacles, when you're playing Rail Chase 2, every single screen has something new to show you. There's always going to be a branching path, there's always going to be a new enemy, there's always going to be a new obstacle. You have to be on your toes the entire time. And while we have just been fighting human opponents or trains, there is one section where we get these killer bees. So apparently something's going on on the island. They must be mutating animals and creating a bee army. That is not canon. I have no idea what's going on. Leave me a comment down below and tell me what you think. But I specifically love this section. You hit a rock and magically ride an entire bridge over into another area. And this next area is one of my favorites in the game because it does give you both all of that grandeur and spectacle of jumping around, but it also slows down and feels like a little bit more of a traditional light gun game at the same time. And that's the best part about Rail Chase 2. It basically feels like two games in one. You have this giant roller coaster vibe going on here where you're going to just basically be jumping down and somehow not dying and going up over these roofs. And it basically just feels like you're invincible. This rail cart is just going crazy and you're having an absolute blast when you do it. And that's why I think this game would be incredible in virtual reality. It has all the trappings of an amusement ride that you could wear on your head. But then we get down into this little town area and it becomes way more of a virtual copper time crisis like experience. And I do love the fact that this gives you both at the same time. As soon as you feel like you've been playing a little bit too much spectacle, the game slows itself down and gives you a little bit more of that virtual cop feeling. The minute you feel like you've done enough of that, it's going to pivot into something completely different. And I will say, as far as final bosses are concerned on the Sega Model 2, this is one of the biggest, longest fights around, and it is absolutely spectacular. There's so many different phases, and I love that there's this giant armored train that you have to fight. I don't remember a giant train being a boss in any other video game, so if you do remember that, leave me a comment down down below. It has weak spots, you have to hit it, and you will see that some of those things are sprites as well. This is one of those games that mixes some sprites in. But again, awesome soundtrack, one more taste, be right back, it is good. The music just 100% fits this game and I think it's some of the best model to music outside of the original House of the Dead. But as we move on with this train battle again, you hit those weak spots and entire chunks of the train are just going to explode and fall out the back and I just love it. 
It's such a big spectacle. This game is just big. That's what I always think about when I think of Real Chase 2. Big environments, big camera movements, big action, big motion. It is just a larger than life game. And it is one of those games that I feel like not as many people have played or remember. Because for every virtual cop in House of the Dead, there is a Real Chase 2. This was not as popular of a game. It is not as well loved. And I think it 100% should be. But again, leave me that comment down below and tell me your relationship with this game. Because a lot of people will say either they've never seen it before or it's their absolute favorite game of all time. There never seems to be any in between being like, I've seen it once, it was fun, and then I kind of just walked away. And what you will see here, we destroyed the train, but we basically only took one path throughout the game. There's basically three independent paths you can take, so you could replay this game two more times and see a lot of new stuff. But I absolutely love the ending as well. It does have big Indiana Jones vibes. It's like a bigger, brighter Temple of Doom. And honestly, it's such a bummer that the third game in this series was never released because they do tease it in the credits. So Sega, if you're listening and you want to make a new virtual reality game, give us Real Chase 3 on PlayStation VR 2. I will buy it twice just to help you guys out. Rail finally went over the edge and it crashed and we were able to land on this biplane and ride away into the sunset. Classic Sega arcade game happy ending. Sure that, I'll be back next week with more Sega videos and I'll have videos throughout the week as well, but if you've never played Rail Chase 2, 100% load it up and give it a shot. You owe it to yourself. It is really just that good. See you next time. Bye bye.